In today's show, I'll be sharing the latest technical analysis as Bitcoin's pumping in in the green. We'll also be discussing spot Bitcoin ETFs to track nearly $1 billion worth of inflows, marking three-week positive streak. We'll also be discussing former President Trump floats the idea of eliminating federal income taxes. That's right. We'll also be discussing Tether CEO breaks down $9.45 billion in Bitcoin and gold reserves, but it is only a part of the picture. We'll also be discussing Michael Saylor urges Microsoft to consider Bitcoin as a path to the next trillion dollar growth, as well as the case for Bitcoin as a reserve asset. According to the Bitcoin Policy Institute, also be sharing some very bullish predictions, Bitcoin reaching from a million to 10 million per coin, as per the Giga Chad Mikey Saylor himself. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market, all this, plus so much more in today's show. If you are new to the YouTube channel, important to smash the likes, go ahead and hit the subscribe, then hit that bell icon, turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Today is kind of a big deal. This is pod episode number 1800. That's right, 1800. I'm your host, JV. It's October 27th, 2024. Happy Sunday, fun day, church is in session. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Checking out Coin360, we're on the cusp of reclaiming 68,000. Bitcoin is pumping, along with the majority of the alt market. We have Ether also about to reclaim 2,500. BNB in the green, Solana, XRP, Cardano, Tron, all pumping and in the green. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, the current crypto market cap, sits at $2.3 trillion. The Bitcoin market cap is at $1.339 trillion. And the 24-hour volume is $43 billion. And the Bitcoin dominance has been on a rise, now 58.2%. Ether dominance, multi-year low, all the way down the 13%. Do you think this trend will likely continue? Let me know your thoughts. And check it out, Top 100. Crypto gainers, past 24 hours, we got Ray leading the pack, up 17%, followed by Arrow, up 12%, followed by Um, up 7%. Uh, let me know which alts, if any, you're bullish on for the bull. Holla at your boy. And checking out the crypto bubbles. We get a visual perspective of the overall crypto market today. Safe to say 80 to 85% of the market in the green and pumping. Zooming out on the monthly, get a broader perspective. Similar story, 85% of the market, however, flipped uh, in the red. But a handful of very impressive gainers, which you can see on your screen. And uh, checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Today, we're at 74 greed. Yesterday, at 72. Last week, at 73. And last month, at 61. And checking out the Time Chain Calendar. We got 182,356 blocks until the next halving in 2028. We're currently on block number 867,644. And you can currently exchange one U.S. dollar for 1400 and 77 Satoshi. So stack them sats accordingly, family. So there you have it, yo. Let's continue. Let's do a little technical analysis. We'll pull up some of the live charts. We'll just do live charts here for today. This is live and in the flesh. Uh, this is Coinbase Exchange via TradingView. This is the one hour chart. Notice from this morning, we had one, two, three, four, five. Uh, green consecutive candles, two red correctives, and a big green where we're currently at being formed right now live and in the flesh. This is the one-hour chart. Zooming out from the one-hour, we'll take a brief look at the other time preferences. Four-hour chart looking lit as well. Big green candle, which is formed. We do have a bullish pennant uh, breakout. We do have a bull target in the blue at 81,300. And we do have a bull target in the green, a bullish pennant, sitting at 78.8. But we also have a bear target uh, showing 50,650. Again, this is the four hour chart. Zooming out from there, we'll take a quick look at the one day. And as you can see, past couple of days have been bullish. Uh, we do have a rising wedge formation on the daily chart. We do have a couple of bear targets, one sitting at 50,500 and the other sitting at 47,700. And zooming out from the daily, we'll take a quick look at the weekly. And as you can see, very bullish here. We still have that sexy cup and handle target sitting at 124,000, which I personally feel is in play sometime here in Q4, especially with a Trump victory. And we got the election in literally four plus five days, nine days. 
So less than two weeks out until the big election day here in the United States. Who are you voting for? Uh, let me know. I'll read the comments here in a bit. And checking out the one-month chart survey says, last couple of months, bullish closes. October looking to be bullish. And uh, obviously, historically, for Q4, year of the halving, we have roughly an 88% price increase of the price action. So we still got a few days left of October before heading into, uh, heading into November and then December. But anyways, let me know your price predictions, projections, thoughts, and I'll read these comments. Spot Bitcoin ETFs attract nearly 1 billion worth of inflows, marking a three-week positive streak. That's right. Let's go streaking. Come on, Bitcoin. Following a splendid performance on October's third week, during which the spot Bitcoin ETFs registered 2.18 billion worth of market inflows, the institutional funds retained investors' interest the following week, evidenced by a total weekly inflow of almost a billion dollars, 997.7 million. And that's according to data from ETF tracking site SoSo Value. The spot Bitcoin ETF recorded a deposit of net flow on all the weekdays except Tuesday, October the 22nd, where they experienced 79 million of outflows. Meanwhile, the largest inflows came on Friday, October 25th, valid at 402 million. And of this figure, the dominant BlackRock's iBit attracted almost 300 million as its cumulative net inflow moved to 24 billion. And I saw they have now stacked over 400,000 of the Bitcoin, aka the Bitcoin, aka the Bitty. Now, in a similar fashion, Fidelity's <laughs> FBTZ emerged in second place, uh, recording 57 million of inflows, while 33 million was invested in ARC 21 shares. And other ETFs that contributed to Friday's gain include Bitwise's BitB, Grayscale's uh, BTC, and VanX HODL, with respective inflows of 2.5 million, 6 million, and 11 million. And interestingly, these positive net flows recorded on Friday mean the spot Bitcoin ETF have now recorded over 3 billion of inflows in the last 11 trading days. And you already know 11 is a divine number, family. And commenting on this development, popular analyst Mikhail Van Day Pop shared the general excitement of the crypto community as such massive inflows indicate significant institutional interest in Bitcoin. And before I quote him here, uh, we actually used him in his analysis in yesterday's pod, uh, he also projected if Bitcoin does what we're anticipating, it could be three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars before you know it. But anyways, reading this quote here: the Bitcoin ETF has seen an inflow of more than three billion US dollars since October tenth. Three billion US dollars. That's a strong sign that we're about to see a big breakout for the Bitcoin to a hundred G's. Let me know if you agree, disagree with that six-figure milestone here in play. And as of now, cumulative total net inflows for the Spot Bitcoin ETFs now stand at 22 billion, with their total net assets valued at 65 billion, which represents almost 5% of the Bitcoin market shares. BlackRock alone controls over 2% of the Bitcoin circulating supply, and collectively 5%. And what's mind boggling, really fathom this the ETFs didn't go live, the spot that is here in the United States, until January 11th. So 10 months. Look at 5% of the circulating Bitcoin supply achieved through the ETFs in 10 months. It's mind-boggling, family. But uh, Ethereum ETFs see negative returns again. Wah, wah. Ethereum's just been declining against the Biddy, especially the uh, Ethereum dominance, Bitcoin, surpass over a trillion lead. There used to be a lot of talk of Ethereum flipping Bitcoin, but I'm hearing this less and less. What are your thoughts on some of those thoughts? You know, Ethereum flipping Bitcoin, watch out, Ethereum's coming for the throne. Doesn't seem to be that way. Doesn't seem to be that way at all. Next story of the day. We discussed Bitcoin ETFs. Now let's discuss the next headline, yo. Here you go. Former President Trump floats the idea of eliminating federal income taxes. How many of you would love to see that? Let me know. During a recent episode of the Joe Rogan pod, former uh, President Trump, how many of you watched the Rogan Trump episode? Let me know. Said he was serious about eliminating the federal income tax in the states, replacing the revenue stream with tariffs on imports. That's right. That was a big topic of the conversation. The 2024 presidential candidate cited the tariff uh, policies of former U.S. President William McKinley during the 1890s as incredibly prosperous for the country and argued that the same policies should be applied today to fund the government. 
government. Trump told Rogan tariffs created so much revenue that public officials did not know how to spend the funds. Quoting him here, we were so rich. We had so much money. We didn't know what to do. So they set up a blue ribbon commission on tariffs. And the sole purpose was what to do with all the money we had. Critics have argued that imposing tariffs on imports will add a hidden tax in the form of increased prices on goods. However, Trump maintains tariffs can drive dollar demand while protecting domestic workers and making U.S. exports more attractive. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the tariffs. Now, radical proposals to the existing financial system are nothing new for the former president, who has also argued that Bitcoin could be used to wipe away the $35 trillion national debt. Trump hinted at the idea during a conversation with Fox News, Maria Bart Aromo, telling the host that the U.S. could repay creditors by handing them a little Bitcoin, which would wipe away our $35 trillion debt. That was actually a very interesting comment. And another shout out to Why Bother? He sent another super input. Anyone else watching the brother and drinking in Thailand? Unplug yourself from the Matrix. Word up, Why Bother? I appreciate the back-to-back -back supers. You guys are so kind. So thank you, family. Keep the comments flowing, and I'll get back to reading all the comments on the stream when we're finished with our Trump story here for the day. But continuing, asset manager Brian Korchanese argued that establishing a Bitcoin strategic reserve for the U.S. government was difficult, but it was not impossible. That's right. He explained that the Department of Justice could transfer the approximately 200,000 Bitcoin seized through various law enforcement actions to the U.S. Treasury and continue accumulating the digital currency as a strategic reserve asset. However, the asset manager also noted the overcoming bureaucratic red tape that would hurdle the establishment and the strategic reserve. Trump is not the only presidential candidate to float the idea of a Bitcoin strategic reserve. Obviously, we had RFK Jr. pitch adopting Bitcoin as well and uh, stockpiling the biddy and all that fun stuff. So there you have it. This is the first election uh, where Bitcoin is at the forefront. Yeah, I mean, mass adoption, let's motherfucking go. Next story, let's discuss Tether has been crushing it, yo. Uh, this particular headline reads, Tether CEO breaks down 9.4 billion in Bitcoin and gold reserve, but it is only part of the picture. That's right. And as shared here, the Tether CEO is on stage uh, discussing, announcing his company owns 82,454 Bitcoin worth 5.55 billion plus 48.3 tons of gold. My question, where do you even put that kind of gold? Like, who's holding that for you? I mean, good Lord. If Ish hits the fan, how do you even use it? Um, but anyways, uh, back to the Tether story, yo. This week, Tether's market cap soared past $120 billion, making it about three and a half times larger than its closest competitor, USDC, which sits at $34 billion. Uh, uh, the Tether CEO spoke of the audience at the Plan B Forum this weekend, an event where the statue of Satoshi Nakamoto was unveiled. Let me know if you saw the statue. It's pretty lit. It's like has like an invisible design, like from certain angles. It's pretty awesome. In a particular slide, the picture shared by the CEO Tran Hung, Tether's reserves were shown to include five and a half billion in Bitcoin and almost four billion in gold, calculated with October 27 exchange rates. Questions popped up in the thread as people noted Tether's Bitcoin and holdings totaling nine and a half billion didn't seem to fully match up with the stable coins market backing but addressing the confusion on x uh, the ceo clarified tether's reserves also include the u.s government bonds quoting them here since i see a lot of the confusion in this thread let me clarify that tether has a hundred billion in u.s treasuries damn plus eighty two thousand bitcoin and 48 tons of gold it sounds like Scrooge McDuck, for Christ's sake. Tether was recently taken center stage following the Wall Street Journal report that claimed anonymous sources revealed ongoing U.S. government investigation into the stablecoin issuer. Tether and its CEO swiftly pushed back against these claims, firmly stating that the Wall Street Journal is regurgitating old noise. Uh, Tether didn't hold back either, calling the report wildly irresponsible and packed with reckless allegations, yo. So there you go. Tether making big moves. It's the number one stable coin for a reason. It's the most trusted. It's been around the longest. And the market cap is soaring along with their reserves. I can't believe they have so much in uh, government treasuries as well. I did not know that. So they are bullish, obviously, clearly on the Bitcoin, on the gold, 
and treasuries. But there you have it, yo. Next story of the day. Let's discuss uh, Sailor on Microsoft, and then we'll discuss Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset and some very bullish predictions that are going to blow your mind. And then we'll do the live Q&A. So yeah, this headline reads, Michael Saylor urges Microsoft to consider Bitcoin as path to next trillion dollar growth. So let's break it down. In a post on social media, Saylor stated, if you want to make the next trillion dollars for the Microsoft shareholders, call me, emphasizing the financial potential of Bitcoin investments. Now you already know, Microsoft, very extremely successful company, um, primary shareholder, Vanguard and BlackRock. Same as MicroStrategy, primary shareholders, Vanguard, BlackRock. And there's supposed to be a big decision coming in the next week where they're going to decide if they're going to adopt Bitcoin. Very strong probability they do. Why? I just saw freaking Adam Back and Samson Mao orange pilling the CEO of Microsoft. Need I say more? Now, Sailor's company, MicroStrategy, made headlines for its aggressive Bitcoin acquisition strategy over the past four years and has been crushing it ever since, outpacing all the other stocks in the S&P 500. And on Friday, MicroStrategy shares hit a 25-year high of $245. I remember Peter Schiff about a year ago came out and said, oh, MicroStrategy is doomed. I, I predict it's going to go bankrupt. Well, you couldn't be more wrong, Peter Schiffmeister. Uh, anyways, reflecting the substantial stock rally driven specifically by the Bitcoin holding strategy approach, Micro Sauce report on the assessment of investing into the biddy pointed out MicroStrategy stock has outperformed the companies by an impressive 313% this year, despite only doing a fraction of the business. So just imagine how much Microsoft can do if they actually adopted Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset and adopted it on their balance sheet. I mean, here you're looking at the daily chart showing uh, MicroStrategy stock value rally, just going parabolic. It's even been outpacing the biddy. And in the report, Microsoft noted the success of MicroStrategy's investment approach, highlighting its stock has seen substantial gains thanks to the Bitcoin holdings. Interestingly, some analysts speculate that Microsoft's new focus on Bitcoin investment might be influenced by its second largest shareholder, BlackRock, which was recently entered into the crypto market after the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs back on January 11th. And since Mr. Larry Fink and BlackRock have accumulated over 400,000 Bitcoin and currently control 2% of the Bitcoin circulating supply in 10 months. Now, Sailor has ambitious plan. You can say that again. Ambitions of a rod, rod, including establishing the company as a leading Bitcoin merchant bank capable of creating various Bitcoin capital market instruments, such as stocks, convertible, and fixed income products. And as previously reported by Bitcoinus, Sailor envisions a future where MicroStrategy holds $100 billion to $150 billion in Bitcoin. I think right now they got roughly 16 to $17 billion. Through these financial structures, MicroStrategy owns over 252000 Bitcoin, valued at roughly $16 billion, acquired largely through debt financing. And according to Sailor, this is the most valuable asset in the world. The ultimate goal is to be the leading Bitcoin bank or merchant bank, or you can call it a Bitcoin financial company. Sailor's strategy remains steadfast. We just keep buying more of the Bitcoin. He believes that the Bitcoin value will soar, predicting it will reach 13 million per coin by 2045, send it less month we can go, as it captures a larger share of the global financial capital. This perspective contrasts sharply with the other companies like Tesla, which have utilized Bitcoin gains for operational funding or fee extraction. But you already know, yo, uh, Microsoft, yay or nay? Will they adopt the Bitcoin? Let me know your thoughts or read these comments out loud. Now for our feature story of the day, the case for Bitcoin as a reserve asset. According to the Bitcoin Policy Institute, along with some very bullish price predictions to share with you, Bitcoin achieving a million plus. So let's dive right into it, shall we? A recent paper from the Bitcoin Policy Institute titled The Case for a Bitcoin as a Reserve Asset argued that central banks should adopt Bitcoin as a reserve asset to hedge against rising inflation, geopolitical risks, capital control risks, sovereign default, bank failures, and international sanctions imposed by the U.S. government. Now, economist Matthew Ferranti, the paper's author, made the case that Bitcoin is an effective portfolio diversifier. 
due to a weak correlation between the decentralized asset and other financial instruments. The Economist also highlighted Bitcoin's lack of counterparty risks as an effective hedge against sovereign defaults, including the risk of financial sanctions, which Ferranti labeled as a form of selective default, impacted nations like Venezuela and Russia. Ferranti uh, clarified that Bitcoin and gold allocations might not be the answer for every central bank. However, the nascent digital asset serves the same store of value in hedging properties as gold, particularly against rapid currency depreciation. Now, United States politicians push for Bitcoin strategic reserve. That's right. The Bitcoin Policy Institute's paper echoed calls from presidential candidates and U.S. lawmakers to establish Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset, like of the United States Treasury Department, following Trump's keynote address at the Bitcoin 2024 conference in Nashville, and also Senator Cynthia Lummis introducing the Bitcoin strategic reserve bill in the U.S. Senate. And let's not forget, we also had RFK Jr. Uh, now, the bill sets the ambitious goal of acquiring 5% of the Bitcoin total supply over time. Effectively, what BlackRock just achieved in 10 months, they have over 4% of the Bitcoin supply, what 400,000 plus Bitcoin achieved in 10 months. So can the United States of America achieve that? Absolutely, if they wanted to. So more power to them. In the interview with Maria Bartiromo of Fox News, Trump hinted, paying the national debt with the Bitcoin, a nod to the supply capped assets power to absorb and transmute currency inflation into the economic prosperity. Now look at this insane debt clock. It's like $35 trillion worth of debt. Is it even possible to pay off? All the experts I hear from say no. It's physically impossible. But anyways, MicroStrategy CEO and Bitcoin thought leader Mikey Saylor praised the Bitcoin Strategic Reserve Initiative as the 21st century equivalent of the Louisiana Purchase. For context, former president and founding father Thomas Jefferson purchased the Louisiana territories in France for $15 million in 1803. Let that sink in for inflation today. 15 million, you can't even get uh, uh, a cart full of groceries at Costco. I may be exaggerating just a little bit, but you get my point. Doubling the geographic area of the U.S. <laughs> at the time, despite the popularity of strategic reserve idea amongst the Bitcoin holders, not everyone is on board with the effort. Cardano founder and Bitcoin hater Charles Hoskinson previously argued that while the adoption of Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset would boost the price of the bitty, it would also allow state actors to influence the Bitcoin network. Oh, no. Anyways, not a fan of that guy. But uh, now for some bullishness from Mikey Saylor himself from an interview. And actually, I got two bullish predictions from Mikey Saylor for you today. And this is verbatim me translating him from interviews. Uh, so let's uh, break this one down. If you look at Bitcoin and model it as digital gold, you know the market cap goes to between 10 and 20 trillion. But remember, gold is defective property. Gold is dead money. Gross. Who the hell wants dead money? Ew. <laughs> you have a billion dollars of gold that sits in a vault for decades. It is very hard to mortgage the gold. It is also very hard to rent the gold. You can't loan the gold. No one's going to create a business with your gold. So gold isn't and doesn't generate much of a yield. So for that reason, most people wouldn't store a billion dollars for a decade in gold. They would buy a billion dollars of commercial real estate property. And the re uh, reason why is because I can rent it and generate a yield on it. That's in excess of the maintenance cost. So if you consider digital property, that's a 100, 200 trillion addressable market. It. So I like to think it goes from 10 trillion to 100 trillion as people start to think of it as digital property, referring to the Bitcoin market cap here. So what does that mean in terms of the price per Bitcoin? At 500,000, that's a 10 trillion dollar asset. At 5 million, that's a 100 trillion dollar asset. 5 million, send it. So you think it crosses a million, but could it go higher? Yeah, I think it keeps going up forever, Laura. I mean, there's no reason we couldn't go to 10 million a coin because digital property isn't the highest form, right? Get down straight. Now, gold was that low frequency money. Property is mid frequency money. But when I start to program it faster, it starts to look like digital energy. And then it doesn't just replace property. Then you're starting to replace bonds. It's hundred trillion dollars in bonds. There's 50 to 100 trillion other currency derivatives, and they're all conventional use cases, right? I think that there's 350 trillion to 500 trillion worth of currency derivatives in the world. And when I say that, I mean things that are valued based upon fiat cash flows. Any commercial real estate, any bond, any sovereign debt, any currency itself, any derivatives to so those things, they're all derivatives. And they are all defective. And they're all defective because of the persistent 7%, the 14% lapse in which we call inflation. 
There you go. Quoting the great Giga Chad himself. Here's another one. First of all, Bitcoin's going up by a factor of 10. Whether they fix any of this stuff is going up to be a grind up by a factor of 10 just because gold is broken. And Bitcoin is going to replace gold. And now everybody in the universe knows they need a non-sovereign store of value in the form of a bearer instrument. And for the last year, people said, inflation may be coming. We're not sure. Now the mainstream narrative has flipped to, inflation is here. You need an inflation hedge. So it's going to grind up to replace gold. It'll go to 500,000 per coin, regardless of whether they fix these things. Here's three things that are massive catalysts that cause an acceleration. Those three things don't take us to 500,000. They take us to 5 million per Bitcoin. Those three things are, number one, a spot Bitcoin ETF, which went live in January of this year, where someone can go ahead and buy 100 million of Bitcoin via an ETF security, just like BlackRock is doing practically every day. Number two, your bank is going to custody it for you and lend against it. In fact, MicroStrategy is looking to create a trillion dollar Bitcoin bank to do just that. Number three, I can mark it up or down on my balance sheet based on fair value. It will be para pursu, the way I handle Apple stock, or at least that good. And if you have property with fair value accounting, by the way, it becomes parapasu to the way you handle treasury bonds or the treasury balance sheet. Treasuries are better than stocks because treasury is property, whereas a stock is a security. And you're capped out at 40% of your balance sheet of securities. So it would be a major breakthrough if you saw any of those three things. And guess what? We got all three mofos. I'll end this one with an observation I tweeted last week. I believe it was very powerful. If the banks can hold the stuff on the balance sheet, then a whole new class of investors are going to buy it. People are going to put it in billion and multi-billion dollar orders to buy it as a treasury asset. Nobody is going to sell it because there is no reason to sell it if you can borrow against it. So you all be borrowing against Bitcoin. Nobody is ever going to sell it. And then, as I joked, you won't be able to afford it. You will be able to afford it but you know everyone gets Bitcoin at the price they deserve. And when the banks normalize it, you can draw a 100 million credit line at 100 basis points from an FDIC-insured bank. And that point, right, we're going to blow through the market cap of gold by a factor of 10. In fact, Max Kaiser says we're going to do it by a factor of 20. For every uh, dollar increase in gold, he says Bitcoin will go up 20 X, 20 bucks. I think the best thing of those three things are likely to happen. I don't know if they'll happen in 36, 24, or 12 months, but I'd be shocked if it's more than 36 months, and I hope it doesn't happen in 12 months, because my view is the longer it takes, the more progressive the grind, the more time I have to buy more of the bitty. There you go. Coming directly from Mikey Saylor, the Giga Chat himself. Let me know if you agree, disagree, and welcome to the Q&A segment of the live stream family.